Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pearls with Janice Fipp. This is my YouTube channel, and um, I hope you subscribe to Pearls. But tonight we're going to be talking about a very important topic, the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights for the State of New Jersey, ABR it's known as, and um, I'm going to do something a little different. I want to go to the New Jersey Department of Education website where they talk about harassment, intimidation, and bullying. There are tutorials. So let's see if we can get there. I'm going to minimize me. And, um, oh, you know what I want to first do? I want to see if I can stay in the picture here. And um, here's the website. Okay, this is um, www.state.nj.us, and it is the page on harassment, intimidation, and bullying, HIB. Introduction to the online tutorials. I want you to know that if you're a parent, this will educate you. Uh, I'm, I have a feeling your school district is already doing a job to educate you as a community member on the um, anti-bullying uh, law and policy uh, which they've adopted within the school district. But as a parent, you can also go on this uh, website and you can learn a lot. Uh, school personnel is really who my audience is for this tonight. And I just want to show you how the um, ABR, which is the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights, ABRs, what it's known as, a law tutorial. Now, there's 61 slides. Obviously, I'm not going to go through 61 slides with you um, because you're not going to pay attention to that. But you need to do that. You need to learn about the um, purpose of the ABR and um, understand that in schools, and you have to understand, I mean, in my intro, you know, I was a superintendent of a school district for uh, going on six years. I was a principal for 17 years and an educator for a total of 42 years. And um, I will say that there was a need for something like this, a definite need. And um, this has made it so that we are able to help students who are, um, I guess, engaging in harassment, intimidation, and bullying, as well as helping the victim of the harassment, be, uh, intimidation, or bullying. But what you have to understand in the definition, and we're going to get to the definition here, but what you have to understand is there is a difference between harassment, intimidation, and bullying which is covered under this law, and a conflict between two students. A conflict is something that occurs when the two students or more are being competitive about something. The power is equal in that case. Then it is not harassment, intimidation, and bullying, or bullying. However, if the power is uh, more on one uh, participant's side than the other. And if it um, is seems to be a one-sided um, effort to harass, intimidate, or bully someone, then it does come under this law. Harassment means any gesture, any, this is slide 10, any gesture, gesture, written, verbal, or physical, or any ele electronic communication. So that's cyberbullying, physical attack, verbal attack, or written attack. Whether it be a single incident or a series of incidents that is reasonably perceived as being motivated by any actual or perceived characteristics such as race, color, religion, ancestry, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, 
or a mental, physical, or sensory disability, or by any other distinguishing characteristic. For example, I'm going to stick on this. I'm going to stay here for a moment. If I am short, and for those of you who know me, I am. <laughs> um, if someone was uh, calling me shorty all the time, something like that, that would be bullying me based on a distinguishing characteristic, okay? Uh, the next uh, uh, aspect that has to be uh, for it to be a hib, if it takes place on school property at any school function or, get this, off school grounds as provided for in the law. Now, if it happens off school ground, but the impact comes into the school, then you absolutely must act. And it can be. So a HIB can be something that happens on school property or off school property. And it also can be anonymously reported. It must be uh, uh, seen that it will be investigated. Substantially disrupts or interferes with the orderly operation of the school or the rights of others. And that, here's the next part, a reasonable person should know under the circumstances it will have the effect of physically or emotionally harming a student or damaging the student's property or placing a student in reasonable fear or physical of physical or emotional harm to his person or damage to his property, or has the effect of insulting or demeaning any student or group of students. It creates a hostile educational environment for the student by interfering with the student's education or by severely or pervasively causing physical or emotional harm. So the results of a HIB absolutely can cause physical, emotional uh, uh, hurt or, or damage or harm. Okay. Um, now the Board of Education has to adopt a policy prohibiting a HIB, an act of harassment, intimidation, or bullying on school property, at school functions, or on a school bus. Um, it's, it's just not allowed. Um, now, that policy should be developed with input from your safety committee. Okay, so the safety committee is made up of school personnel, but it's also made up of community members. Could be parents, but uh, representatives of the community. So you need community input in order to have a, a good uh, policy within your school district. So the community gets involved here. Um, we have the definition Uh, let me see. The investigation. I want to tell you a little bit about this. You have your CSA or your chief school administrator. You have the board. It all gets reported to them. However, it comes through the districts ABC and ABS. Now, let me tell you what they are. Your anti-bullying coordinator. Now, your anti-bullying coordinator is a, a person who um, is listed on the front page of your school's website, and that is the coordinator of the um, investigations with the principal and the ABS, and that is your anti-bullying specialist. So your specialist also has a lot of responsibilities. We're going to get to that. So. Um, uh, the ABS does the investigation with the principal, but also chairs that safety committee that I talked about. The ABR, the Anti-Bullying uh, Bill of Rights, explicitly, explicitly establishes that nothing may prohibit a school district from adopting a policy. They must have a policy. And the policy must be made so that it dovetails with the student conduct 
code of conduct within the school. So it's not made uh, up uh, alone. It ha it's made up with input from the school administrators and the safety committee. And it gets reviewed and you must, I mean, it's one thing to have a policy, but you, uh, the law says that each school district must develop a process for discussing the Hibs policy with students and with parents. And it is well um, communicated on your websites, through your code of conduct book, and um, a handbook for parents, uh, usually. That's not exactly in the law. That has to be a handbook. Uh, which provisions exist in the ABR regarding reprisal, retaliation, and false accusations? This is interesting also that um, a student false, falsely accused against a victim, witness, or one, um, uh, there are actions that are taken. Okay, so we're, we're going to keep going. All staff, now this is key, certified staff gets trained in harassment, intimidation, and bullying law, but also non-certified staff. So your bus drivers, your cafeteria people, everybody has to be. Your substitute teachers who come in have to be trained uh, to be approved to be a substitute in your district. In addition to the school district's in-service requirements during each five-year staff development period, teachers and educational services professionals must complete the following PD, two hours of instruction on um, uh, HIB prevention, and then another two hours on suicide prevention and how suicide prevention or suicide risk of relates back to harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Um, your ABC, your coordinator, and your specialists have to have time to perform their duties. Your Board of Education gets uh, involved. They get trained. They get involved in terms of having the uh, harassment incidents reported to them. So it's reported to the Board of Ed, and um, there's a grade given to the school district. I want to try to get to some more. The CSA, or the Chief School Administrator, your superintendent, is responsible to ensure that the district is fulfilling its responsibilities as required by the law. Now, the policy is connected also. Don't forget this. We're going to find this later in another slide. It's connected to school climate. It's connected to having a policy. And so um, your school climate has to be such that students feel safe, that it's a clean environment, that it's an environment students want to be in. So safe and clean as part of that climate, but we're going to see some more on that. Um, now, your um, anti-bullying coordinator, they make every effort for the coordinator to appoint an employee of the district, but the um, anti-bullying specialist must be an employee of the school. A um, And I'm going to show you who who it might be. Uh, let's talk about this. When a HIB report, wait a minute, receive a HIB report within two days of the investigation's completion. All right, let me tell you a little more before we get to this. Um, number one, when a, uh, when someone within a school district or outside of the school district sees or hears of a uh, HIB incident, they must report it to the principal within two days. Okay? Then the um, investigation must be completed by the principal and the anti-bullying specialist within 10 days uh, of it having been reported. And then 
it goes to the superintendent, the chief school administrator, who then reports it to the Board of Education. Once it has been reported to the Board of Education, within five days, the re, uh, the uh, parents of the HIB offenders and victim must be given written information about the uh, incident within five days after it was presented to the Board of Education. Okay. Um, public reporting. Let me go uh, say something about that too. You know that safety committee we talked about? The safety committee gets a report also on all of the harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents that occur. However, remember this, and it's just logical. The... Um, Parents who are on that safety committee would never be privy to, they would never have exposed to them names of uh, victims or names of actors uh, who were involved in, the, in that because then it's a confidentiality issue. So your names are never used, okay? Um, the anti-bullying specialist must be a guidance counselor or a school psychologist or another current school employee trained to act as the ABS, okay? Um, verbal report on the same day as the incident or the same day information received on the incident. Okay, now I said two days. The written report has to be given to the principal within two days. But don't misunderstand. Once you see something, a verbal report of the incident of something that could be HIB, harassment, intimidation, or bullying, must be given to the principal that same day. Let me say it again. A verbal report must be given on the same day as the incident or the same day information was received on an incident that occurred. However, a written report would be given within two days to the principal. Then, within one day of the verbal HIB report and the additional staff to assist with the investigation, okay, uh, investigate, I'm sorry, initiate the investigation within one day of the verbal. So that that investigation starts within one day of the verbal report. So I see something, I must report it verbally that day. I get a phone call from a parent that at a sleepover party on Friday night, there was a, an incident that seems like it's going to impact the school or students within the school. The report comes to me from the parent on Monday morning. I must report that verbally to my principal that same day. Now, I then have to do it in writing within two days. All right, within two days. However, my principal and the ABS, the anti-bullying specialist, are beginning the HIB report within one day of the verbal HIB, and they're starting to identify, investigate uh, people or staff members who they may need to help with the investigation. And they have to inform parents of all alleged offenders and bullying. Now, the principal assure investigations are completed as soon as possible, but the deadline is 10 days, within 10 days of the written report. Principal must complete the investigation within 10 days of the written report. Uh, provide for student safety immediately. Implement in conjunction with the ABS the range of responses to HIB established by the Board of Ed. Submit written reports of HIB investigations to the um, superintendent within two days of the completion of the investigation. So on that 10th day, you only have two more days to get it to the CSA or superintendent. Appoint 
the principal appoints the members of the school safety committee, including a teacher, uh, the specialist, the anti-bullying specialist, a parent of a student in the school, and other members determined by the principal. That's where that community input is there. Serve as a member, the principal's on the safety committee. They assist the safety committee in all their responsibilities and complete the HIB training for school leaders. A principal has to do all that. The ABC, this is your anti-bullying coordinator, coordinates and strengthens the school district's HIB policy to prevent, identify, and address HIB students, collaborates with all of these people, provides data. Now, data is very important because what you have to understand is your harassment and intimidation and bullying um, and your climate creation to have a safe, comfortable, clean school environment without harassment, intimidation, and bullying, the information to get to that point comes from data collection. Okay, so there's a lot of input. There's information that comes to us on what people think about the climate of the school right now. That's data we need. Um, information on what the students and the teachers think about whether there is bullying or harassment, intimidation, and bullying going on in the school right now. That's data that gets collected. All very important. Um, now, the anti-bullying specialist, we were saying, um, chairs that school safety committee, leads in the coordination with the principal, the investigation of HIBS, acts as the primary official for preventing, identifying, and addressing incidents of HIB in the school, assists the principal in determining what responses would be appropriate, provides input on the reevaluation of the policy. So really, the ABS, that safety committee also, remember this, the safety committee gives input into uh, enhancing the uh, positive climate in the school, and the safety committee helps with revising that policy, the HIB policy. Okay, so that's school safety team. Develop, foster, and maintain a positive school climate, see, by for, uh, focusing on the ongoing systemic practices in the school and addressing climate issues such as HIB. They meet twice a year. They review the HIBs of students. However, see that asterisk there? Parents serving on the SST are not permitted to participate in these or other activities that may compromise the confidentiality of a student. That's what we said before. Identify and address patterns of HIB in the school and, and make changes so that um, they don't happen again. Review and strengthen the school climate. See? Safety committee, school climate, and policies. Okay? So that's all good. I want you to keep looking at all this. I am telling you, look at all that can be found on this website. The questions and answers are great. That guidance for schools on implementing the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act is terrific. And now comes a quiz. Can you imagine? They teach it to you and then they give you a quiz and give you the answers. So um, let's take a look. One of the purposes of the ABR is to clarify and strengthen the standards and procedures for preventing, reporting, investigating, responding to HIV of students. True or false? Obviously, that's true. Good. School districts are prohibited from responding to HIB incidents that occur off school grounds. Absolutely false. School districts are required to respond to HIB incidents that occur off grounds when they meet all of the criteria established in a HIB definition, including the criteria that the HIB must substantially disrupt or interfere with the orderly operation of the school and the rights of the students. Okay. The HIB policy must be located within or must be consistent with the district's code of conduct. I said that. Okay, so that's definitely true. Okay, now, 
By providing certified staff with HIB training, the school district will comply with the in-service requirements. No, 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 because it's got to be certified staff and non-certified staff, okay? So that's false. In addition to certified staff, all school staff persons contracted by the district to provide services to students and volunteers who have significant contact with students are required to receive HIB training. Beautiful. Okay. One of the functions of each building-based school safety team is to review and strengthen the school climate and the policies of the school to prevent and address HIB of students. Absolutely true. We said that. The only role of the ABS is to investigate reports of HIB and write reports on the investigation. Absolutely no. That anti-bullying specialist has a lot of responsibilities. Anti-bullying specialist responsible to chair the school safety committee, lead the um, OHIB investigations, and act as primary school official responsible for preventing, identifying, addressing incidents of HIB in the school. The ABS provides input to the board on the annual reevaluation, reassessment, and review of the HIB policy, and at the board's request, makes recommendation to the board for discipline or services and any programs instituted to reduce these incidents. Listen to me. Do not think that all a school district needs to do is buy some bell and whistle program, implement a program, and you've got no more harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Just the implementation of anti-bullying programs isn't going to do the trick. It has to be a community-based, a school-wide effort to collect data, to make sure you have, as the school safety committee is going to do, have um, information on what makes good, strong, positive, comforting, inviting, respectful school climate with a clean building. I mean, you, you wonder about a clean building, why that's so important, but it is. So just bringing in a program isn't the answer. It is all of these things, community input and uh, data collection and all. It's just, uh, and it works. It works. The principal must serve as a member of the SST. Yes, absolutely. The HIP policy must be developed with the input of parents and other community representatives, students, school staff, school administrators, and volunteers. Absolutely yes. You want a lot of input. Principal must submit the written reports of a HIB investigation to the chief school administration administrator within two days of the investigation's completion. It says five days. It's not. That's false. The here you go. The principal must submit the HIB report to the chief school administrator within two school days of the investigation's completion. Okay? The uh, chief school administrator must report all of these acts of violence, vandalism, and HIB to the Board of Education at a public hearing two times a year. Absolutely. True. Okay. So... Let me bring myself back up here and um, how's that? Good. Okay, I want you to go to the New Jersey Department of Education website. Go through those tutorials and um, you're going to learn a lot about how to stop harassment, intimidation, and bullying in the school. For those of you who are taking college courses such as Rutgers University offers, I know their education students have to take a, um, a quiz on uh, the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights. And this material will help. Okay? Thank you very much. Please subscribe to Pearls with Janice Phipp on YouTube. Bye.